Delhi police arrests a 21-year-old climate change activist, Disha Ravi, from Bangalore. The charge? She spread the toolkit tweeted out by Greta Thunberg to solicit support for the farmers' protests. The police claimed she was conspiring against the government. The court grants the police five days' custody. Hundreds, including minors and several elected legislators of Jammu and Kashmir, remain under preventive detention and that the near total alienation of the people of the Kashmir Valley from the Indian state continues a new report on human rights in Jammu and Kashmir states. The Prime Minister visits coal-bound Tamil Nadu in Kerala. He pays homage to the Javans killed in the Pulwama terror attack in Tamil Nadu. Meanwhile, Congress leader Rahul Gandhi kickstarts his campaign for the Assam polls, addresses his first public rally, accuses the BJP of dividing the state. Petrol and diesel prices go up for the sixth time. Premium petrol prices over 100 rupees a litre in Madhya Pradesh. Petrol crosses 99 rupees a litre in Rajasthan. Diesel at 91. A fast tag, a must from midnight tonight or pay twice the toll fee if you don't have it. The government gives one day's deadline to buy a fast tag or pay double. And meet India's real heroes, a group of students, children of daily wage labourers themselves, providing free private coaching classes to children from class 1 to 5 in government schools whose education was impacted by the pandemic. Top story of the day, the Delhi police have arrested a 21-year-old environmental activist, Disha Ravi, from Bangalore, in connection with the probe into the toolkit, which was shared by the Swedish climate change activist Greta Thunberg to solicit support for farmers' protests. Disha Ravi was produced in a court in Delhi, and the police now have her in their custody for five days. Disha Ravi is one of the founders of the Friday for Future campaign. It's a campaign that's endorsed by the teenage Swedish climate change activist Greta Thunberg. It's a campaign, a global youth campaign that started off when Greta Thunberg uh, on Friday skipped school and sat in protest outside the parliament of Sweden, the country where she's from, urging the government to act, take stronger action on climate change. Now it is alleged that Disha Ravi, according to the police, edited the toolkit and sent it ahead. The Delhi police says that she is an editor at the toolkit Google Doc and they are calling her a key conspirator in the document's formulation and dissemination. The Delhi police says that she is the one who shared the toolkit document with uh, Greta Thunberg and later asked Greta to remove the main document after its incriminating details accidentally got into the public domain. Let's go across to Akshay Dongre. Akshay, of course, uh, social media, Twitter, etc., all a uh, buzz, people coming out on both sides, absolutely condemning uh, this uh, arrest and others uh, um, saying it is a uh, right. But this young 21-year-old, she is an environmentalist, a young Indian environmentalist, will be spending uh, the next five days in the custody of the Delhi police? Well, yes, exactly. And that all... Uh today uh, transpired when the Delhi police, especially the special cell uh, producer in the Padayala House Court, and the Delhi police actually was speaking, uh, speaking at the uh, seven-day police custody because they said, the Delhi police officials, that, that, that they wanted to arrest two more people, including Shantanu Malik and Nikita, who also were associates of uh, Disha. And as far as the, the uh, uh, developments are concerned, they are the Delhi police is stating that all the data from the uh, phone of uh, Disha has been deleted by her and they wanted to retrieve it to get more information that what exactly was the role of Disha as far as this entire conspiracy is concerned. Uh, the Delhi police also stated that Disha was uh, one of the key conspirators against the government of India. She was trying to create a uh, 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 differences between the people uh, as far as the uh, cases are concerned. It is sedition, a conspiracy trying to create enmity between two groups of people inside the country. And the police also said that this is one of the largest conspiracy as far as uh, the uh, conspiracy of reviving a Khalistani movement in the country is concerned. Disha has clearly stated in the courtroom that she only edited two lines of that toolkit 
on 3rd of February. That was much later after the 26th of January. But the police did not seem... Uh, uh, the police, in fact, did not agree with it. In fact, they said that it was not just two lines that Disha uh, Ravi uh, changed, but it was an entire uh, formulation and dissemination of this uh, toolkit. They said that uh, Disha Ravi, in fact, gave the toolkit to Greta Thunberg that she later tweeted. And when this entire information came, the entire toolkit came in the public domain, it was Disha Ravi who asked uh, Greta Thunberg to remove it from Twitter. So this is the entire case. The Delhi police is right now probing. They have said that this is a much larger conspiracy and Disha, in fact, is influenced by people like Durban Singh Pannu of uh, Canada and uh, uh, she was influenced also by a group uh, named as Poetic Justice, which is a pro Khalistani group. So, in fact, the Delhi police now is probing a much larger case, which the Delhi police claims is a case of conspiracy against the government of India and state of India. And uh, they say that uh, Disha Ravi is a, uh, has a much large, larger role to play as far as this conspiracy goes. And they have five days now to prove these charges. Thanks, uh, Akshay Dongre, for that update. And Prime Minister Modi visited pole-bound Tamil Nadu today and inaugurated a number of projects, including a section of the Chennai Metro Rail. He said that the nine-kilometer long stretch had been completed on schedule. Despite COVID restrictions, he also handed over the indigenously developed Arjun Mayer battle tank Mark 1A to the Army Chief General in Chennai and applauded the farmers of Tamil Nadu for what he said were record food, food production and water use. It is our honor to work towards preserving and celebrating the culture of Tamil Nadu. The culture of Tamil Nadu is popular globally. Today, I have a delightful message to convey to the Devendra Kula Velalar, Devendra Kula Velalar community, sisters and brothers in Tamil Nadu. The central government has accepted their long-standing demand to be known as Devendra Kula Velalar. Our government has always taken care of the welfare and aspiration of our Tamil brothers and sisters in Sri Lanka. It is my honor to have been the only Indian PM to visit Jaffna. Through development works, we are ensuring welfare of Sri Lankan's Tamil community. And after Tamil Nadu, the Prime Minister also visited Kerala as well and other states that's due to go to the polls this year. The Prime Minister shared the stage with the Chief Minister, Pinare Vijayan, and launched a slew of developmental projects in Kochi. During his address, he focused on the tourism sector in the state. He also spoke about Indians working in the Gulf and efforts taken to help them during this pandemic. Tourists come to Kochi not only as a transit point to go to other parts of Kerala, the culture, food, beaches, market places, historical places, and spiritual places here are widely known. The government of India is undertaking many efforts to improve tourism related infrastructure here. I urge our young startup friends to think about innovative tourism related products. I also urge you all to use this time and travel to as many as nearby areas as possible. India is proud of our diaspora in the Gulf. It has been my honor to spend time with them during my previous visit to Saudi Arabia, Qatar, UAE, and Bahrain. I shared meals with them, interacted with them. As a part of the Monday Bharat mission, over 50 lakh Indians came back home. Many of them were from Kerala. And Congress leader Rahul Gandhi kick-started his campaign for the Assam polls, addressing his first public rally and accused the BJP of trying to divide the state and said that the Congress would never implement the Citizenship Amendment Act, or CAA, if they were voted to power. CAA, 
सी ए ए और इस पर हमने क्रॉस लगा रखा है मतलब चाहे कुछ भी हो जाए चाहे कुछ भी हो जाए ये देखो सबने पहन रखा है ये देख लो चाहे कुछ भी हो जाए सी ए ए नहीं होगा हम दो हमारे दो हम दो हमारे दो अच्छी तरह सुन लो नहीं होगा कभी नहीं होगा हम दो हमारे दो बाकी सब मर लो भाई और बहनों हिंदुस्तान को आज चार लोग चलाते हैं और आसाम के लिए मैं उसका थोड़ा एक्सटेंशन लाया हूं जो आसाम को चला रहे हैं हम दो हमारे दो हमारे दो और आसाम से सब कुछ लो In a new report on human rights in Jammu and Kashmir, which looks at the period between August last year and January this year, has made a key point that hundreds, including minors, and several elected legislators of Jammu and Kashmir remain under preventive detention, and that there is near total alienation of the people of the Kashmir Valley from the Indian state. The report has, as its members, Justice Madan Lokur, Justice Rumapal, former judges of the Supreme Court, Justice A. P. Shah, Justice Bilal Nas. Ki among High Court judges, former Home Secretaries, former Secretaries, Armed Forces personnel, and historians. Take a look at some of the key takeaways uh, from this report. First, human rights in uh, Jammu and Kashmir on this midterm report says that 12,000 of the 38,000 additional troops flown in to enforce the lockdown have been withdrawn, but hundreds, including minors, several elected le legislators of Jammu and Kashmir, remain under preventive detention. Public assembly is still prohibited under Section 144 of the Criminal Code of Criminal Procedure 1973. As of January 2021, unemployment in Jammu and Kashmir stands at 16.6 percent. The statutory bodies for human rights, women rights, child rights, anti-corruption uh, bodies have not been reinstated. There's near total alienation of the people of the Kashmir Valley from the Indian state and there's concern over the new domicile rules and reversed land laws. And petrol and diesel prices touched all-time highs across the four metros today, that is Sunday, the 14th of February. This after oil marketing companies increased the rates by around 30 paise for the sixth straight day. So take a look at this. This is what you're going to be paying if you're going to fill up your gas tank. In Delhi, the price of petrol was hiked from 29 paise uh, by 29 paise from 88 rupees to about uh, 884 to 88.73 per liter diesel increased by 32 paise in mumbai the revised petrol diesel rates stand at 95 rupees per liter and 86 rupees per liters the fuel rates are the highest in mumbai out of the four metros premium petrol price in madhya pradesh crossed rupees 100 per liter for premium petrol now people shall out rupees 102.99 per liter in madhya pradesh गाड़ी किस्त बड़ी मुश्किल से भरा रही है रोज के दो दो ढाई सौ दिन भर में हो रहा है और कोई मेहनत करे तो क्या बनेंगे उसमें कुछ नहीं मिल रहा है पेट्रोल है तो महंगा ही महंगा हो जा रहा है अभी तक तो बहुत ज़्यादा कष्ट नहीं हो रहा था लेकिन जब से फ्यूल प्राइस बढ़ गए पेट्रोल का प्राइस मेरे ख्याल से एम में सबसे ज़्यादा है क्योंकि सबसे ज़्यादा वैट पेट्रोल और डीजल पर एम में लग रहा है अब तो जाना मुश्किल हो गया है once again touching all-time highs across all four metros. Petrol rates were hiked by over 25 paise in just a day and diesel rates spiked by over 30 paise in a day on Sunday. Before coming to the sun, they said that they will come in a good day. But in a good day, they will not see one day. What they should do for the common people is not enough. And the petrol is still growing. And this is the most important thing about petrol and diesel. It's very expensive. अपना तो एक ही कहना है गवर्नमेंट से महाराष्ट्र राज्य से भी और उन मोदी जी से भी कि उन्होंने डीजल और पेट्रोल के भाव कम करने जाके वो सबसे जरूरतमंद चीज है ये। So why are the fuel prices on the boil? The consistent rise in fuel prices brings to mind only one question for the common man: just what is the solution? 
experts believe in the near term, both the centre and state governments will need to look at ways in which they can slash taxes or at least look at ways in which taxes can be moderated. However, in the long run, experts feel the centre as well as state governments will need to look at ways in which they can reduce their expenditure so they're not as dependent on fuel prices to generate revenue. They also feel competition is needed for the sector to be healthy and for prices to be lower for consumers. Petrol and diesel prices are rising since January 6 and if this continues, it can have an inflationary impact not only on personal transportation but also on other essential commodities. Bureau Report, NDTV. And the Ministry of Road, Transport and Highways has announced that all lanes in the free plazas on the National Highway shall be declared as fast tag and that's from tonight, midnight tonight. So starting Monday, any vehicle not fitted with the fast tag or without the valid functional fast tag entering into fast tag lane shall pay a fee that's equivalent to two times of the fee applicable to that category. And more bodies have been recovered from the flash flood hit areas of Uttarakhand's Chamoli district, taking the count and the calamity to at least 50. This is the rescue team's battle against odds to bring over 30 people trapped in a sludge choked tunnel in Tapovan for over a week to safety. The bodies were recovered from the slush of the main tunnel at Tapovan where rescue operations have been going on since the 7th of February following a glacier burst. These are the first bodies to have been recovered from the tunnel. The tunnel we have been working on the tunnel. We have recovered two dead bodies from the tunnel. We have also got और इसी से उम्मीद बनती है कि आगे और भी हमें रिकवरी का चांसेज है वहां पे और उसी के लिए हम सतत प्रयत्नशील हैं रात में भी जो ऑपरेशन हमारा चला हुआ था और लगातार भागों में जो चला हुआ था तो उसका अब रिजल्ट मिलना इस टनल टनल के अंदर से भी शुरू हो गया है and the central uh, reserve police force of the crpf today played paid a floral tributes tribute to the veterans on the second anniversary of the 2019 Pulwama terror attack in Jammu and Kashmir. We're going to go in for a short break. After that, we'll try and get you a feel-good story, a special report coming in from Bangalore. Stay tuned. And finally, let's get you a story on some Indian heroes, a group of student volunteers in Bangalore who are providing free private coaching classes to children from class 1 to class 5 of government schools whose education has been impacted by the pandemic. Take a look. Children and students were heavily impacted when schools had to shut down due to the COVID lockdown. Now, a group of student volunteers called Campus to Community in Bengaluru have come together to fill the gaps in education for the less privileged through their initiative School Bell 2.0. Many, like Saraswati, missed out on learning and education most of last year, courtesy coronavirus and the ongoing pandemic. Behind me, you see, are a few houses in a small little settlement in North Bangalore's Matikere area. Saraswati, like many other children, walks about 100 meters every day to this learning center to get some basic education like art and crafts, English, Kannada, mathematics. 21-year-old Mahesha, son of a daily wage worker and a student himself, spends about two hours each day with these children providing tuition free of cost. A settlement of about 15 to 20 families next to a railway station in Mathikere, most of these kids are children of migrant labourers and daily wage workers. 
So I will come a weekly once or twice to teach craft. Really, when we had a childhood, we had a very bad childhood because nobody was uh, like teaching us the craft work and uh, waste from the best. But uh, now when I came here, I felt that uh, like uh, I need to improve their childhood and it should be like memorable for them. So we are doing this in almost all the universities of Karnataka. So we are aiming to get 10,000 volunteers, which will help around 4 lakh students. We feel uh, education is the most powerful tool, and uh, and uh, today's uh, uh, one of the more initiative program is like. What we give to society is more important than anything else. The coronavirus pandemic may have taken away physical class time from many students, but this hasn't stopped many and their spirit to come forward and help each other out. One such example is just behind me, a group of students and volunteers from Bengaluru coming together to help and educate the students and the children of migrant laborers and daily wage workers in order to keep them busy and engaged. With camera person Kumar in Bengaluru, Shanakshi Chakravarti for NDTV. And that's the news at this hour. Stay tuned to NDTV for more updates.